But there's actually a country, I guess a country singer, named Benjamin Todd. He has on the front of his neck a massive tattoo, and it's the numbers 11030. And it's just big, bold numbers on, his, on the front of his neck. And I kind of thought, like, that's obviously something very meaningful to him. I was so curious that I googled the number set, and I found out that it was a non-associated zip code. The zip code is known as the hobo zip code because when you run a line through the 1-1, one, one, it'd be an H, and when you run a line through the back of the 3, it'd be a B, and it would spell hobo, but 11030. I thought, wow, that's cool. What's the significance behind this? The hobos were, you know, now we think hobos, and we kind of think like it's almost derogatory, right? It's almost like an offensive term, you hobo. Back in the day, it was actually like a preferred brand as opposed to being like a tramp or a bomb or something like that. Just a couple of tramps. Basically what a hobo was is just someone that chose to be a traveler and they would live, like some people would say they were homeless, but they were just travelers. They kind of had camps as a community, like hobo camps, and they would all travel for work and they would take like odd jobs. In general, they weren't received very well in towns. They weren't really received well in towns. Oh shoot. Did I just destroy my fire? Generally, these hobos, they jump train cars from town to town. They jump rail cars, get to the next town, find some work. And they'd either work for food or for money. That was kind of like the two things that they were looking for, equally important. And because they weren't received very well in these towns, they would have like this code of markings and interpretations, basically like scratchings, like brands and signs that they would use to communicate with each other and how they were received at this person's house or at this post office or it doesn't matter where they were. So they would leave little scratches and little symbols that all had universal meaning to them that they would understand if they would, for example, it was the home of a cop or they got fed there or they were religious so they talked faith. And if you talk faith, kind of play that card, they're gonna be more willing to accept you into their home and give you food or money. Sometimes they would leave a little marking that would say, hey, there's a vicious dog that lives here, be careful, all these different things. So I found it a very interesting, like when I got onto it, that there's actually a country, I guess a country singer named Benjamin Todd. He has on the front of his neck a massive tattoo and it's the numbers 11030. I found out that it was a non-associated zip code. And the zip code is known as the hobo zip code. So I started researching it. That's kind of how I came up with my own little tattoo that I've had here for a few months. And it's I ate. That means that they ate there. I ate here. They were fed there. So I kind of thought it was funny. For me, as a chef, I traveled a lot. I moved from different jobs. And I kind of always felt like a traveler in that regard, like as a, as a chef. I was always a bit nomadic, whether it was in my own city or if I traveled the world doing it. And then I thought it's kind of cool. I'm, I'm kind of like that. If somebody told me they were hungry, I'd try to feed them. That's why I got that. That's my connection. And that's why we're making hobo foil packs. And this is kind of something that they would just make. They would take any leftovers they would get from any home, pack it in foil because they didn't have Tupperwares back in the day, believe it or not. They would just reheat it on a fire, throw the foil pack on the fire, reheat it. That's kind of what we're doing. You just use what we have, throw them in a foil pack, throw it on the fire, let it cook up for a little while until it's done and eat it. Same as you can. Oh. <laughs>
I got into reading more about this kind of culture and I realized a lot of people on the surface might think that it's an involuntary lifestyle and uh, I didn't see or read anything that was like this is the life we want but you realize that they they have this community they have these camps in the town to town it might be near the rail like the railway station so they could easily get on trains get off trains whatnot they could find each other easier and then inside these camps and inside these communities they operate under like this very strict code of conduct so like if you have food to share you share your food they make this hobo stew I guess everybody takes their leftovers or what they have they throw it in a pot and then it's a communal stew Mr. Salt, that's your pepper, a whiff of garlic. One, two, three. Last night was just right. Last night was four. Three. I say four. Three. It's like a frisbee. Well, we're gonna have a little hint of ash in everything. Lots of garlic. Got some oregano. Lots of black pepper. Lots of salt. I'll just toss this up. And then they have like a strong sense of, of morality, you know, they how they treat criminals. I'm sure a lot of them weren't ace people. A lot of them were probably criminal in nature for sure, but there were certain crimes that you just don't do in that community. And they had a way of dealing with these guys if they found out in the group. I always check the seasoning. Oh yeah. It was, it was a total choice. It was almost like they, these younger hobos found like a sense of adventure or freedom in being that kind of person. And I, I kind of re relate to that in my cooking history. Just I had this sense of with food and cooking and the ability to move around and go places. It was just a, a sense of adventure. And I think a lot of them took that path. I think a lot of them were led that way. That was the kind of hand they were dealt and they went that route. But I think for many of them, it was a, a choice. And actually in Iowa to this day, they still have hobo festivals. So people that don't quite jump rail cars and go from town to town and do that, but they kind of emulate the lifestyle and they, they classify themselves as modern day hobos and uh, they live the life. them because the heat that kind of gets in these packs is like a steam heat and it just makes the casings chewier so I like to take them out and then pat them into like little patties like so thinner so they cook quicker vegetables piled on testing some butter some butter here there we go All right, throw some herbs on top for some aromatics. Yes. So you don't want it to have any holes. If you have holes in it, it's going to puncture and then the steam escapes and then this steams your heat that kind of cooks this, so. I'm actually gonna flip them now. Oh, you get a little aroma in there, sneaking through. Oh, buddy, buddy. 
Do we have something here? Oh, it's cooked. It's cooked perfectly. Sausage. Cooked through perfectly. Oh. Sammy boy. Carrot, right? Oh. Bro. Bro. Nailed it. Absolutely. Absolutely nailed it. Tender potato. Succulent sausage. See this? Oh, not burnt, but caramelized. Oh. It's all done. The big reveal. See what's see what's going on inside. Oh, this is my favorite part. Just look at this. Boop, boop, boop. Oh. Yes. 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 Oh, you can smell the thyme and the rosemary. You got the bottom where it's nice and crispy, but I'm getting, I'm, ah, <laughs> dude. My groin is on fire. Here we have our work of art, the final result. Now, I'm not a hobo foil pack expert, but I will say this, this is perfect. I'll tell you why it's perfect, because you got a bit of everything. The potatoes cook beautifully, right? Even a little bit of caramelization. And usually when you have a bad foil pack, there's too much steam, not enough sear. So you put in meat, but it's all steamed meat, not caramelized. But here we have some caramelized vegetables. It's all steamed perfectly. Look, it doesn't, it doesn't turn to mush, but it's cooked thoroughly. Tastes delicious beautifully seasoned, but look at this. This is the sausage on the bottom. Charred up, caramelized and roasted succulent pork sausage. Absolutely beautiful. Carrot. Delicious. The aromatics from the rosemary and the time is life-changing. Yeah, just, it's so insanely delicious that this could be a daily thing for me. I, I love these. These are delicious, and they're kind of nostalgic because I had them growing up. Mom would make them, but totally delicious. 10 for 10. You ought to try it. And... I guess I'm becoming a hobo now. It's official. See you in Iowa. <laughs> the peppers, dude. Sweet, sweet and delicious. No, bro. I'll give you the real hitter. Knock your block off. Okay. Oh. Oh, that was cheesy, you put in there. No. Just Italian sausage. Yeah. Boys, I brought a tablecloth and all the fixings. Nice fried chicken. Some baking powder biscuits. Some baked potatoes. And good old hot coffee. What's the matter with you two? We wasn't sure it was real, Prez. Why, of course it's real. Come on, pull up. 